bright lights and late nights on Broadway. And I try to find peace, drowning my sorrows in drink. Lord, have mercy. Lindsay, Pope Joan, and I are ready. <laughs> so yesterday, my family and I went down to the Cape Cod Canal to walk along the path that leads from one of the parking lots down to the beach. The weather was about like this. And as we're walking along, we look over my shoulder, and what had at one time been gray-black clouds was now a sheet of rain. And it came sweeping across the canal and drenched and dumped on us. Now, I had my umbrella because I anticipated the rain. My daughter had her umbrella because she wanted to make sure the baby was safe. So I kept one grandchild safe and she kept the other grandchild safe who stayed dry from the rain, but the water filled the cup holder of her little tricycle that she was on. So when the rain stopped, she of course dipped her hand in and drenched herself with water. Now, I'm telling you this story because there's still some people out at the lighthouse who are texting us saying, where's church this morning? And we want to give them time to get back here to join us. Drench us in light better than rain. Lord, have mercy on me. Thank you, Leah, for leading us into worship this morning. Folks, there are a couple of announcements I want to share with you. I hope you'll have a chance to read what is in the bulletin just to catch up with everything that is coming up and happening this summer. And again, I want to welcome you, those who are here, those who are online, and those who are about to join us from the Lighthouse. You are at Old North Church, and we are delighted that you are here with us this morning. Now, I invite you to join with me in the call to worship that's found printed in your bulletin. God of hope, we are grateful. We come into your presence this morning with confidence that you meet us here when we open our hearts. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let us this place be a sanctuary, a safe haven for us, a home for holy words and silence and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Invocation is a word that means 
calling down, we're invoking, calling in the presence of God. We know that we actually don't have the power to call God's presence into this place, but we have the power to call ourselves into awareness of God's presence. What I'd like us to do for this invocation time is for you to listen and let the words of this psalm wash over you. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Don't fret about those who amass great fortunes and carry out their schemes unchallenged. Let go of your anger and leave resentment behind and stop worrying. It produces nothing but evil and evildoers will be cut off. But those who put their hope in the Lord, they will inherit the land. A little while longer and the violent will be no more no matter how hard you look for them, they will not be found. But the gentle will inherit the land and will enjoy abundant peace. In the silence, let us listen for the voice of God. And we join our voices together in words that Jesus taught, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of the waves, we are carrying heavy burdens and we feel ourselves sinking. Buoy us up. We are weighed down by responsibility, by the false idols of productivity and perfectionism. Buoy us up. We cling to that which cannot save us, status and money and the illusion of security. Buoy us up. We feel ourselves adrift, far from your love. Buoy us up. We lose our way, carried this way and that by the whims of the world. Buoy us up. In the silence, we bring before God all that weighs us down holds us back, and keeps us from living the lives to which God has called us. God of the waves, your love is as vast as the ocean, as steady as the tides. We come today to release our burdens and let your love and grace wash over us. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we assure ourselves and one another of God's love and grace. God, your love is wide and deep and never-ending. We can rest in your love. We have set down our burdens, unclenched our fists, and found ourselves held up by your loving presence. Thanks be to you, God of endless grace.
This morning's gospel lesson is from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 26. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Buoyancy by Rumi. Love has taken away my practices and filled me with poetry. I tried to keep quietly repeating, no strength but yours, but I couldn't. I had to clap and sing. I used to be respectable and chaste and stable, but who can stand in this strong wind and remember those things? A mountain keeps an echo deep inside itself that's how I hold your voice. I'm scrap wood thrown in your fire and quickly reduced to smoke. I saw you and became empty. This emptiness, more beautiful than existence, it obliterates existence. And yet, when it comes, existence thrives and creates more existence. The sky is blue. The world is a blind man squatting on the road. A great soul hides like Muhammad or Jesus, moving through a crowd in a city where no one knows him. To praise is to praise how one surrenders to the emptiness. To praise the sun is to praise your own eyes. Praise the ocean, what we say, a little ship. So the sea journey goes on, and who knows where. Just to be held by the ocean is the best luck we could have. It's a total waking up. Why should we grieve when we've been sleeping? It doesn't matter how long we've been unconscious. We're groggy, but let the guilt go. Feel the motion of tenderness around you, the buoyancy. We have heard these words from scripture and from poetry. Let us find within them the word of God. Will you join me in prayer? As we have heard the words in poetry and scripture, God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be guided, be touched, be shaped, be moved, be made buoyant by your Holy Spirit. As we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Throughout the summer, while I am preaching, I'm borrowing from a series of books by Roger Housden called Ten Poems. Ten Poems, in this case, To Open Your Heart, is the title of this book, but he has a variety of books within that series. This morning, I'm looking at this poem, this story by Rumi. Love has taken away my practices and filled me with poetry. Rumi was a Sufi and a mystic. He had lived a life of serious study and disciplined stoic practices until he met Shams, of Tabriz, a mystic who would set his heart on fire. 
Rumi had followed in his father's footsteps and was head of the center of religious learning, a, a religious scholarly school in the city of Konya, Turkey. He was renowned for his intellectual insight and scholarly teaching. People came from all over the place to listen to his teachings or to become his disciples and followers until Shams. One version of this first meeting with Shams is that Rumi was giving a lecture to his students by a fountain in the city. Shams appeared, walked up to the revered teacher, and threw his books into the water, saying it was time for Rumi to start living what he had been reading about for so long. The moment that Rumi met Shams, looked into Shams' eyes, and heard him speak, Rumi's heart was changed forever. Prior to that meeting, he had only written scholarly works on Islam and had won honors for those works, but after that, it was all poetry. Instead of giving eloquent lectures to the delight of his students, he would spin around the columns in the mosque, singing out love praises and love songs in verse. That poetry has shaped the hearts of people around the globe for seven centuries. I tried to keep quietly repeating, no strength but yours, said Rumi. I tried to keep quietly repeating, no strength but yours, but I couldn't. Every spiritual tradition has its own battery of techniques with which to dismantle our ego's preoccupation with itself. Focusing on our breathing, mindfulness meditation in the moment, focusing on words or a mantra like no strength but yours, that intentional movement like Tai Chi or yoga, memorized prayers like the Lord's Prayer or the Rosary, contemplating sacred texts like Lectio Divina in Psalm 23, they're all very, very good practices. Some will say that revelation and enlightenment, that sense of deep, deep union with God, come gradually through disciplines like these. Others say that it comes only due to the grace of God in a moment. I will tell you that God rarely conforms to any such practice or answers or theologies or instructions. Nothing you can do can make God do anything. In the book, Housden quotes a wisdom of the Sufi tradition that says, if you seek God, you will never find God. But if you do not seek God, God will never reveal God's self to you. It's echoed in the ancient words of the prophet Jeremiah, when you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. So Rumi's prayer, Rumi's poem, is not merely there for analysis and contemplation. It's not meant to give clear instruction or insight. He was swirling around the columns and singing out his poetry. It is meant to go somewhere deeper inside you, beyond anything that I could explain. Shams had been told in a vision that he would find his only true spiritual friend and a successor to his teachings, someone who would recognize the love that was already burning inside Shams if Shams were to go to Konya. The vision told him that he would need to be ready to die for that grace, and he immediately set out for Konya and knew Rumi the moment he saw him. Rumi knew it as well. In his poem, he writes, I saw you and became empty. This emptiness more beautiful than existence, it obliterates existence. And yet when it comes, existence thrives and creates more existence. When Rumi met Shams, it was that burning fierce fire of sacred love that he saw in Shams' eyes that caught him. It was Shams' connection to divine love that emptied Rumi of ego, of his self, so that a deeper sense of his truer self could emerge. It was Shams' connection to divine love that emptied Rumi. And in the Sufi tradition, that word for emptiness is fana. It's that sense of letting go, of emptying of everything that separates you from yourself and from that love. And again, I can say all this with words, but the understanding of the wisdom of this is something deeper. It's something that Jesus understood. 
when he spoke in that metaphor and story, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. That language of hate this life in this world is not about hating yourself. It's about letting go of that facade, that persona, that part of you that tries to convince the world that everything is okay inside you. The mask that we all wear to try to hide the struggles within ourselves is the letting go of all of that that every tradition treats to surrender, to release. And you can't make this happen, and it won't happen without you trying to make it happen. And there's no time like the present or beyond the present to begin to enter that grace. Rumi offers an insight. Why should we grieve that we have been sleeping? It doesn't matter how long we've been unconscious. We're groggy, but let the guilt go. Feel, now this is, it would have been really great to be at the lighthouse to talk about the tenderness of motions as you look at the waves rolling in and out. So I want you just to imagine you're out there and the waves are coming and going. We're groggy, but let the guilt go. Feel the motions of tenderness around you, the buoyancy. Rumi went from intellectual theological teacher to a mystic, swirling around those poles, those columns in the mosque in a rapture that spontaneously burst into poetry, which his followers recorded and passed along through the centuries. Those followers would form the Mevlevi, what we might know today as the swirling dervishes and shams, was assassinated by Rumi's followers who could not live with and resented the loss of their intellectual teacher. They had not found buoyancy. The buoyancy is always right here. It's always possible. Surrendering and emptying ourselves to that sense of God's love, that sprouting of life within us when we let go of the life we think we need to create around us. Like the Sufis say, if you seek God, you will never find God. But if you do not seek God, God will never reveal God's self to you. So I invite you to choose buoyancy, to choose that grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies, to let go and just explore that tenderness of motion, that movement of the spirit that can come alive inside you when you let go. I'm going to invite us to because again, I think much of the spiritual practice is not about words I can teach, but about simply pausing and letting go. So I'm going to invite you to listen to a song from the Teze tradition and let these words help you find buoyancy and release. Okay, that's not going to work. We'll do it this way. Catch on to the words, sing along. Take her, take me as I am. Summon out what I will be. Set your seal upon my heart. And live in me.
Will you pray with me? Your tenderness is all around us, loving God, buoying us up in a world that is harsh and hardened, in a world that is parched and angry. We seek the healing, cleansing, quenching of your love. Help us to notice how your love and your tenderness is all around us, as present as water and taking as many forms. Holy One, may your tenderness work its way into our hearts as it does into dry soil and wilting plants. Bring us back to life. Help us to blossom and bear fruit. Holy One, your tenderness pursues us and tends us and cares for us. You are with us like a parent with an infant. So we whine and wander away and fall down. You are always patient with us, loving God. You are always watching us. You are teaching us. You believe in what we can be, and you summon it out of us. God, sometimes we imagine that you will be mad if we come back into your presence, that you will chide us or scold us, but you simply long to embrace us and to shower us with your love. Help us to accept that love and that tenderness that you have for us. And make us people that share that love and tenderness with those around us. We bring before you our hurting and hungering world, God. We ask for tenderness to replace war and violence. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for peace to come quickly there. We pray for your tenderness to be made real and visible in the places of natural disaster in this world. Make your tenderness tangible to the people in Vermont who have lost home and farm and field. Make your tenderness visible to the people in the South under the weight of so much heat. Make us people who reach out to those in need and who hear the call to care for this fragile earth home of ours. God, bring your tenderness to all of those who are sick and suffering, to those who anxiously await test results, to those who wait at bedsides. We remember before you especially this morning Priscilla Poitras, a former member of Old North, who passed away suddenly this week. God, be with all of those who grieve those who have died. Wrap the mourning in your tenderness. We call to mind those others who have died recently, who weigh on our hearts. And Holy One, bring your tenderness on the children of this world and the children of this church. We thank you for signs of new life. We thank you for living embodiments of your tenderness, your care, your creativity. Be with all of those who care for children and make this into a church 
that nurtures them. God, before you, we lift up all of the cries of our heart and the cries of this world. Buoy us up, loving God, that we may rest in your love and be restored. We pray this for ourselves. We pray this for our world. We pray this for those we love and those we find difficult to love. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. Every tradition teaches that detachment, surrender, let go, let God, thy will be done. May you surrender into the emptiness of the deep tenderness of God, that you might become those tender people, bringing that love out into the world in poetry and dance that lives within your heart and your soul. May you bring God's peace and joy into your life and through your life into the world around you. And may you go forth into this day, rain or sun or clouds or whatever, knowing that you are God's beloved people. Go in peace. Amen.